What's up guys, it is the next day and we are continuing to get the minivan back together for race week and we are just about there. We just need some final touches. We're actually changing out the radiator right now. I had mentioned that we had an overheating problem with the Routacy. We weren't 100% sure what was causing that. It could have also been partially because of the head gasket that was starting to go out. So we have a fresh head gasket and we were gonna try to put a full size radiator in this thing. We have like a Mishimoto over there, um, but it's just not gonna fit with the way we have the intake manifold and intercooler piping on this side. So we are going to try the Speed Factory Racing uh, radiator. That's what they originally sent this one over for in the first place. Um, that guy is right here. So right now I'm just getting ready to mock up where it's gonna go, get some tabs welded on to our traction bar down there, and then it will just bolt to the bottom on these bungs that it comes with right here. We actually did a test. We filled this one up completely with water and the stock one as well. And this actually holds more water than a eBay half size radiator. We got that one on the ground over there. So this one holds more fluid and we have the shroud with a high flow fan. Uh, so that gives some space in between the fins and the fan so it can draw more air. And we're hoping that uh, between this and the new head gasket and we also took the thermostat out uh, that we won't have any more overheating problems. So once again, shout out to Speed Factor Racing for this badass little Radiator, we'll get this guy mounted up and we're getting the uh, AN lines made right now. We also had to order all Dash 16 AN lines. So we got like this 90 right here. It's gonna clean everything up nice. And then K-Tune sent us uh, these little pieces right here to adapt to Dash 16 instead of these barb fittings that were on there for a regular radiator line. So we got the Dash 16 fittings onto there. We'll run all Dash 16 lines. It's gonna look sweet to our new little Speed Factory radiator. And we'll be ready to go. Then we have to get the downpipe and stuff on. Got a brand new battery to put in here as well. And then just start going through it. Fire this thing up, get all the fluids in there. And hopefully she doesn't get hot and hopefully she sounds good. We also checked the lash, the valve lash, while we uh, have the valve cover and stuff off. But everything is looking good. So we're just trying to get this thing together and have it ready for the beginning of next week. All right guys, the Radicy is just about put back together. Emilio got out of here not too long ago, but I did not want to leave tonight until I hear this thing run and she is ready to start up. Uh, we left off with getting the tabs welded to the traction bar to mount our new Speed Factory Racing radiator. Got that done, the tabs are welded and I got them painted and we got our radiator mounted up into the Radicy right here. We got some fresh AN lines ran. And look at that guys, it cleans up the look so much more than having regular coolant lines. So loving the Speed Factory radiator. We no longer have the extra fill cap right there as well, like the uh, eBay half size one did. So yeah, cleaned up the look a whole bunch. Got that all done and got a lot done off camera. Everything is ready to go as far as oil in the motor and oil in the transmission or training fluid, whatever you want to call it. All the fluids are good. We have uh, coolant inside the cooling system. Everything is tight. We have the battery put on, ready to go. And yeah, guys, I wanna hear this thing run so we can get out of here. She's ready to start, so let's do it. It's nice not having a windshield. You can just reach right in. Hell yes, guys. Radicy's back up and running. She sounds awesome. We have good oil pressure. And I shut the camera off for a while. I actually let it warm up for quite some time. And I wanted to double check that it wasn't getting too hot. I let it fully warm up and she's good, dude. I ghetto rigged the fan so I could just touch the uh, positive to this power right here because I do have the fan set to come on at 170. And it got to about 172 degrees and I plugged the fan in and it came down to about 165 before I shut it off. So it was actually uh, cooling it down, which is really good news. I can't confirm how it's gonna do when we actually go to drive it around. Something else I forgot to mention is I talked about in the last video that we needed to put little heat covers over the rear heater lines because they were really close to the manifold and stuff. You can't really see it, but we did put 
uh, little heat shields over that. They were just little sleeves that they had at the parts store. And we just had to cut them to length, put those over the heater core lines, and that's all good. I'm super pumped, guys. Radice's back up and going. There's still a whole bunch of little things that need done before it's ready for race week. I have the whole weekend plus Monday to get this thing done. I'm gonna come back tomorrow. I need to get the headlights working. We need a horn. All this stuff is required for Rocky Mountain race week. All the lights need to work, and I just need to go through the car. Make sure that we have everything we need. I need to start getting spare parts. Uh, I need to make a cover for the fuel cell. You guys are uh, in the comments wondering about that. Yes, we are gonna try to make a cover to cover up the fuel cell so it is separated from the driver compartment. I want to make a quick catch can uh, from the valve cover to a little catch can to help catch the oil. And that's pretty much it. We have some tires coming uh, with the new wheels to put on for race week as well. Get this thing on some radials. And yeah, that's about it. There's, like I said, a lot of stuff to get done, but I think will be good. I am on schedule right now with where I want to be. Everything's running good, didn't have any issues, so that's awesome. And uh, yeah, another thing on the heating system or the cooling system is we are also going to be putting this plastic box back in. Uh, this has the AC condenser in it. This is what connects the blower motor to the rest of the vents inside the car. I'm gonna gut that condenser out of it, but I need to reuse that plastic housing so then we can have a working heater inside the van. So if for some reason it does start to get too hot, we can also turn the heater on and that will help draw some heat from the engine as well. But uh, from what I've seen so far, I really think the Speed Factory radiator is gonna do the trick. So that is awesome. I'm super stoked about that. But yeah, I think I'm probably gonna head out for tonight. Don't know what else to do. We do have the hitch and stuff, so maybe we'll throw that on. All right, before we get out of here for tonight, we have one last piece to put on the minivan. Got ourselves a hitch. A good old U-Haul. This thing finally came in, ordered it like three days ago. We were kind of worried that it wouldn't make it here in time, but we got ourselves a hitch, and they did used to have a hitch on this thing. I think I said that in the other video of the roll cage and stuff, because we actually have the wiring already done and hooked up, and there's actually already some bolts in where this needs to go. Looks like they hold the bumper supporting, but we're gonna have to unbolt those guys and then our hitch should just line right up. So we're gonna go ahead and get this bolted on before we head out tonight. And we'll be ready to start towing. Those are rusted in there. I don't know <laughs> if it would be long enough, but this one's too short. Positive. Are I'm you pretty, pretty positive? No. I'm pretty <laughs> sure I'm I'm good. Let go. Alright, go help him out. You know the trick. I'm scared this side just go oh, swing. I know what's going on. He's too short. He can't reach. <laughs> oh, it's messed up. Oh, it's just uh, getting this. It almost yeah. needs to be pried over, just barely. That was meant to be. She's good to go. We have to get uh, one more bolt, actually two more bolts on this side and one more on that side, which we'll do tomorrow because we just don't have enough time tonight. It came with these little pieces for the hitch that you're supposed to fish in and add a third bolt right here. And you have to drill a hole for that one just for some added support. And then I just need another like transmission Honda bolt for this one. So we'll find all that stuff tomorrow, but the hitch is on there at least. We're ready to go. So we're gonna out of here for tonight though. And we'll pick back up on the Radice tomorrow. All right, guys, I'm back over at the shop, and right now we're getting ready to take the Radice over to a place to get a windshield installed. They normally come to us, but they didn't have anything available in the time frame that we need. It would be too late, so I'm actually gonna have to bring the Radice to their shop, and we're gonna get a fresh windshield put in this thing, and I went ahead and painted the front bars of the roll cage. We got them painted tan, like you guys asked for, so there's definitely a little bit of a brighter tan, but it actually matches the headliner pretty good. So we'll actually see what it looks like when it's all said and done, but I needed to paint these right now so that when we get the windshield in, they're painted and done because we obviously can't paint the face of those with the windshield in. And we need to get going right now because my appointment is uh, about to come up. So we're gonna get this thing loaded up into the trailer and uh, bring her over for a new windshield. You're sitting pretty low in there, buddy. <laughs> Not exactly any seats in here. And this windshield's real clean. I just put a windshield in my car for the first time ever. It feels so weird. Yeah, I can so see. Nice, my other one was so sand pitted, like you drove into the sun, and it was like looking through sandpaper. Willie, you want to guide him in? Stuff good. 
Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's just the horn dangling down there. No, go ahead and just unplug that for now. Yeah, you're good. We do need to tie the wires up later. Yeah. Because the loose wires are just close to the tire. Good. You got it in a gear? Yeah, it's in first. Okay. It's nice you got all this room to crawl through the back. I know. Oh yeah, I got that new glass in here, nice and clean. Now I just gotta drive this thing into the trailer. No seat, wish me luck. All right, we are all loaded up and ready to head back to the shop. All right, we just got back from getting the windshield put into the Rodicey, and there it is. Looks freaking amazing, so got that done. And right now I'm working on getting the headlights working because we are required to have working headlights, and both of the headlights in the Rodicey do not work. This one used to work, but the bulb must have went out, so I went to the parts store, and I picked up two new headlight bulbs right there, and I got them both plugged in. This one came back on, and that one did not. Turns out the fuse was missing for that guy, so I got a new fuse in there. And now they both come back on, and that side was a little dim when it would come on. This one was much brighter. Uh, turns out the plug is also pretty loose, so what I ended up doing is they have these little prongs on the bottom. I didn't do it to that one, but this one, I kind of bent the prong out just a little bit, kind of hard to see, so it actually hugs in there a lot tighter, and then it brightened right up. So those are good to go, and before I can put them in, I actually need to fish out a old headlight that is dangling in the housing right here. That has been in there ever since we first we got there out of you guys. I just left that in there and I was in the middle of unbolting the headlight to try to like dump it out through the hole in the back, but I just realized I could probably just get a magnet and try to fish it out. I have a magnet right here, so let's see if we can just get this guy out real quick. It has been in there for a long time. This headlight has actually never worked since we got the Rodicey. So I figured now would be a good time to finally fix it. It's definitely gonna take a second to get this guy out. All right, we need to move it over a little bit. All right, there we go. And if you're magnet in, come on. Oh, I'm latched onto it. This is gonna be tough, holy crap. I think the little metal, oh, there's like a little brace in there that you have to get around. I might have to take the headlight off because there is a piece inside the housing that this is gonna be really tough to get around with a magnet. Oh. Maybe, maybe, oh, we are so close right now. We are so close. I just gotta maneuver it so it comes. Oh, 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 don't you drop right there. Hold on guys, I'm gonna go and just grab it. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I don't wanna let go of the magnet either. I have to like crawl my hand forward, hold up, hold up. Oh yeah, there she is. Come on, don't let this fall. Oh, the cage is still holding it together. Gotta unhook the little wire. There it is. Woo, got it out. So yeah, this little backing piece fell off, so that's what let it kind of fall in. But there, we got it out. So now we can put our new bulbs in, and the headlights will be working on the Radicey. All right, the new headlight bulbs are in. Let's see if these things work. Oh yeah, Radicey has headlights. That is awesome, I should have done that a long time ago. That's looking so much better. She has the headlights working. We got both of the corner lights working right here. Let me check the blinkers, the front and rear. Oh, we need to turn the key on real quick. All right, so left turn signal is working. And in the rear, it is working and our running lights in the rear are working. Let's try the right turn signal. Nice, we have right turn signal working and the front turn signal is working as well. So I'm assuming the hazard should work fine as well. Oh, I can actually, I can actually see the lights through the housing through the inside of the car. So I'm gonna hit the hazards real quick. Yep, both hazards are working. I can see them blinking back there. And then let me check the brake lights. I can just look through the back. 
Oh, yep, they're getting brighter. So we have all of our lights working. Uh, the last thing I need to get working is the horn because uh, our horn does not work. We actually did test it last night. The horn itself works. It's over here on the floor somewhere. Well, I don't know where the horn exactly went. It has to be laying around here somewhere. We just had it last night. Uh, but like I said, the horn works. We powered it up. Uh, just something is up with the plug or wiring because the fuse for the horn is good. It plugs in to, I believe, this plug right here. It's one of these. And you plug in and nothing happens when you hit the button on the steering wheel. So I just need to trace the wires back and uh, get the horn working. But we still have a couple days to do that. And I'm not too concerned about the horn because worst case scenario, we can just hook that up to a switch if it's not working off the steering wheel. Um, but yeah, everything else is working that I need working for right now. Um, these are the wires for the radiator. I need to get these cleaned up. The radiator does come on. I just need to uh, get these wires a little more legit and time up nicely out of the way. I need to tie the battery up real quick or actually strap it down and uh, that will be good to go. And I do want to take this thing on a drive today. I'm probably gonna drive it home just to make sure everything is good. I did actually drive it on and off the trailer to go get the windshield and it seems perfect. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start strapping the battery and stuff down, get all this cleaned up. And then I'm going to go ahead and start putting some of the interior back together, get the driver's seat back in probably the passenger seat, maybe even the rear seats as well, get everything vacuumed out on the inside because it's still really messy in here from when we were working on the roll cage. I'm gonna have to come back and paint the cage later. You guys are probably gonna say I'll never do it, but I really do wanna get the page painted right when we get back because I think the tan is gonna look really good. That was a good suggestion from you guys. It is a little bit brighter, like I said, than I would have liked, but it does actually match pretty good. If we actually clean this off, it'll probably pop pretty good so i am gonna go ahead and paint the whole cage that tan color it matches the headliner really well like i said so uh yeah i'm gonna go ahead and just start buttoning some more stuff on this thing because we are running out of time but she's getting there this thing is looking ready to go it's close you got your tires on the back and the fuel nice little rack so what's the deal with the trailer you're gonna use it so it turns out it's there. just a little more load than I want on the converter and everything. Curse so. is not a tow vehicle. No, nope, not so much. It's a luggage rack kind Jamie of Jamie went out and bought that brand new little trailer. It's sweet, and he pulled it around the other night, and he's just not feeling I like would, putting that much stress on it. I'd rather break the car racing than trying to drive to the tracks. So we figured luggage rack, we've already got the hitch. So we drove around a day like this, and it was great. So then you can use the trailer. Yeah, and it works out perfect because yeah. I've been struggling to find a trailer. Yeah, exactly. So Jamie is nice enough to let me use the nice little trailer he just picked up. Yep. And uh, yeah, and then he's gonna be mobbing this setup with the curse, with the rack, just got his stickers on there. And she is just about ready to go. He's gonna be enjoying Father's Day tomorrow. So he got everything prepped and ready. And he just has to come back Monday and I just button a couple like little things up. Parts in basically is all I need to do. And it's ready to go other than that. Yep. Sweet, man. That's awesome. So Jamie's ready to rock. Finally. All right, guys, I got the minivan pretty much all put back together. I just got all of the seats put back in and we are ready to take this thing for a test drive. I'm actually gonna take it over to Hayden's shop. He's about half an hour away, so it will be a good first test for the Radisey. Make sure she's good. I got the front bumper on and there's a whole bunch of other little things that I just had to tighten up and get ready, but she's ready for a test drive. So we're gonna go over to Hayden's and hang out for a bit and hopefully she makes the drive so i'm excited yeah as long as you don't call me we're all right yeah as long as you don't hear from me you know i'm doing good yep but we got two more days to prep but i'm really excited with how far i'm at i'm pretty much ready to go we just need spare parts and button up a couple things but you as long as really, she you did really good you did a lot better than i thought you were going to like on the time frame i, I was, was kind of i've been hustling you. on this thing dude been here all day, but she's yeah, ready. I was pretty worried for you when the, you know, starting the cage so late and having the motor and tranny out. That was a lot of work, but you you hustled and got it done. Yeah, she's just about ready to go. So as long as this test drive goes good, we'll be set. So I'm gonna go yeah. hang out with Hayden for a little yeah. bit. Yeah, go for a cruise. Don't call me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some bad news uh, everything was going good with the drive and you can obviously tell that it's now dark outside and I'm now about half an hour away from the shop I was on my way to Hayden's that was the original plan stopped at the gas station to uh, get gas and 
I was continuing my way over there and then I heard a tick starting to come from the engine. Uh, it wasn't too horrible, but then I pulled into an O'Reilly's parking lot and I just let it idle for a bit and I got out to listen to it and it definitely sounded pretty bad. So I ended up shutting the car off and I pulled the valve cover to try to look at all of the rocker assemblies and everything like that. Everything looks perfect, so I'm not 100% sure what the issue is yet. It does still run and drive fine. It just has a really loud tick and it sounds like it's coming from the head. It's not like a knock. Um, so it was bad enough to where I didn't want to drive it anymore until I can bring it back to the shop and really look at it. It was also really hot, so it was kind of hard to do. Um, but I was just making sure it wasn't anything obvious and it's kind of hard to see what it is. So now I'm just uh, getting ready to load up the route to and take it back over to the shop. It's about 10 p.m. right now. The day was going perfect. I made amazing progress and the van was pretty much ready to go. Um, but then this happened. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing loaded up and bring it back to the shop and probably tear into it and start seeing what happened to it. So it is what it is. All right, guys, back at the shop and I pulled the valve cover back off of the route to and I ended up finding the issue. So. Turns out, oh, dropped my magnet. Turns out we broke a lost motion spring. You can see the head of it broke off right there. That's where the spring broke. This was just resting inside there. I did not catch this the first time I pulled the valve cover off. And it is this one right here on the exhaust. So that's why I couldn't see it when I was over at the parts store. I was even looking at all the lost motion springs as well. And that one you can't really see from this angle, but I found this guy. Uh, kind of resting in the oil down in there. So got that out with a magnet. That is our tick right there. So it's kind of good news. I guess it's not too hard to replace. Um, does kind of suck because I might need to pull the timing cover and stuff back off. I'm going to attempt to fix this without pulling the timing cover first. I think I can just bungee cord the chain up, pull the exhaust cam and uh, get that replaced. That's what I'm going to attempt to do. Then just turn it over, make sure everything's still on time. And worst case scenario, if I can't, I'll just pull the timing cover to make sure it's all good. Um, but yeah, this spring is the one that goes right here. You can see it right there. So this is what the uh, VTEC lobe kind of rides on when uh, VTEC's not engaged or whatever. It kind of assists that middle lobe. So yeah, we broke the head off of that guy right there. And luckily we have more from the MR2's other head. So I can just pull some out of that and get this thing fixed. So I'm just gonna stay up tonight and get it knocked out. So I just got the exhaust cam taken off and we can go ahead and take a look at the damage. Oh, you can actually see right here, if I don't touch anything, you can see how low this middle roller is sitting compared to the other ones. And that's because the top of that spring broke off. So this is the one that we need to flip up and inside of here, yep, there it is. There's our broken lost motion spring. You can see where it snapped off and then the other end of that is what is on the magnet, wherever that went. Oh yeah, it's over here. So, so that is where the noise was coming from for sure. Now all we have to do is replace it with a good one. And I got one right here that I pulled out of the MR2's head. So I'm gonna go ahead and slap this guy in and we should be good to go boys. So. It's definitely something we should probably bring a couple spares of with us to race week, just in case it's really weird that this broke. These usually don't go out like that, but you know, stuff happens sometimes. This is just the stock lost motion spring, so who knows what could have caused that, but we're gonna go ahead and get her fixed up. All right, boys, it is one in the morning and she is put back together. Cross your fingers that the ticking is gone and that it is on time and that my chain did not slip. I turned it over to make sure no valves were hitting nothing, so we should be good. It's gonna run no matter what. Oh, come on. I think we're good, boys. Woo! She's good. No more tick. Hell yeah. Get a little rev. Nice. Well, that is going to wrap this video up, guys. Holy crap, so much happened in the last couple days. That's the second time I stayed up to one in the morning 
working on this dang thing. But please leave a like on the video, guys. I did not want to give up. I was really bummed out, honestly. I was like, dang it, dude. Drove it all the way into town. Had a horrible noise. I should have started filming. You guys can blame me for that one, but I was just not in the mood. I was like working on this thing for so long. Got it back together though, and she is good. So please leave a like on this video, guys. And uh, yeah, many of you may have saw my Instagram. I posted about it. Everyone was freaking out. And I honestly thought it could have been a lot worse than that. Luckily, it wasn't horrible. But she's back up and going. And I'm calling it for tonight. So we have more to get done tomorrow and Monday as well. I'm going to stay up to edit this video right now and try to post it tomorrow, which is uh, Sunday, which is actually also today. Um, but yeah, and then I have some more stuff to fab up because we still need to cover the fuel cell. Still do all this other little stuff. And then we still have all day Monday to start getting parts and stuff ready for race week. And yeah, I think I'm actually probably going to drive it home tonight. I want to be sure that it's good. So I'm going to get it off the lift and mob it home. And then maybe I'll give you guys an update once I make it back to the house. So we'll wrap it up there. Sorry, it's a bit dark, but the Routacy did make it home just fine. So we are good to go. We'll see you later, boys.